let's dive right into it with frame rate. The frame rate of a shot is the number of pictures taken in a second of video that then get animated to create a video as you know it. For instance, a video shot at 24 frames per second would have 24 pictures taken every second, and a video at 60 frames per second would have 60 pictures every second, and so on. When you shoot at a lower frame rate, there is a gap in the movement between each frame. For instance, take a look at this backflip from my chase scene in a previous episode. See how much he moves between the two frames? When played back at a normal speed, the human brain automatically compensates to the difference between frames and creates what you know as video. The four main frame rates most cameras can shoot are 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second. Some higher end DSLRs and mirrorless cameras also shoot 120 frames per second. So which one do I use? The traditional frame rate for the film look is 24 frames per second. This creates a realistic amount of motion blur and smoothness. Let's take a look at the difference between 24 frames per second and 60 frames per second. See if you can tell which is which. The one on the left was the 24 frames per second one, and the one on the right was 60 frames per second. The 60 frames per second one looked almost too smooth and dreamlike to watch. For instance, they shot two versions of The Hobbit, one at 60 frames per second, and one at the traditional 24 frames per second. When the viewers of the 60 frames per second one were asked what they thought, most of them said it was too smooth, and it, they felt like they were watching it in the studio with them as they filmed it. And they didn't like it as much as the 24 frames per second version. Higher frame rates are usually used for shooting slow motion videos. For instance, you would slow down 60 frames per second 2.5 times till it plays back at 24 frames per second, and you would slow down 120 frames per second 5 times. So all things considered, it is usually best to keep your film shot or at least exported at 24 frames per second, or if you're in Europe, 25 frames per second. You can always shoot at different frame rates if you want, but be cautious about doing it. Shutter speed. The shutter speed is how fast your camera opens and closes its shutter. If your shutter is set to a slower shutter speed, it is open for longer periods of time, so when it is open it catches more movement, creating motion blur. And when it's faster and open for less time, it captures less motion blur because it's exposed to that movement for less time. The faster the shutter speed, the less light it lets in and the less motion blur you get. The lower the shutter speed, the more motion blur you get and the more light you let in. Let's take a look at two shots. One shot at a shutter of f50 and one shot at f1000. So as you can see, the one shot at f50 looks a lot more natural, while the one at f1000 looks very choppy. Choosing your shutter speed is directly associated with the frame rate you choose to shoot at. The rule of thumb is to choose a shutter speed that's double the frame rate you shoot at. For instance, if you shot at 24 frames per second, then you should shoot with a shutter speed of f48, or in most DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, f50. But this is not a rule to be followed all the time. For instance, if I was shooting a dream sequence, then I would probably shoot at something more like f30 and 60 frames per second to create an extremely smooth looking video. For instance, in Saving Private Ryan, not only did Spielberg shoot a lot of handheld, but he also shot at a much higher shutter speed to create that feeling of energy in his shots. I did the same thing in my chase sequence from a while back. I shot handheld and at a much higher shutter speed, like f800, to create a very choppy, fast-paced action feel. But this could be an entire video on itself, so I'm going to move on for now. ISO. The ISO is your camera sensitivity to light. The higher the ISO, the brighter the image. The lower the ISO, the darker the image. If you increase the ISO too much, you will get lots of digital noise that looks just awful on camera. Here is what ISO does to your video. As you could see, the first few clicks of ISO looked fine till about 1600, when it started to look nasty with all that noise. There is a limit to just how much you can pull from an image using only the ISO setting. So if you're filming at night, you may want to watch last week's video on how to film at night for more advanced settings. But that brings us to our next setting, Aperture. The main function of a camera's lens is to collect light. The aperture of a lens is the diameter of the lens's opening. This is normally controlled by the iris. When you hear people talking about the aperture, they are usually talking about the iris. The iris is the internal ring inside the camera's lens that opens and closes to let in more light or less light. It also increases or decreases the depth of field. As you see here at f1.8, you can see almost all the way through the lens because the aperture is wide open. This lets in much more light and creates a very shallow depth of field. At f22, on the other hand, the aperture is much smaller, and you have a broader depth of field that lets in much less light. A lens that opens up to f2 or more is considered a fast lens, while a lens like a kit lens that only opens 
up to about f3.5 is considered slow. It's usually a good idea to get a fast 50mm lens when first starting out in filmmaking. The traditional film look has a shallow depth of field. And to get that, you want to open your lens up as wide as it will go. But when you do this, you will often get too much light in your image, even if you turn your ISO all the way down. The easiest way to get around this without increasing your shutter speed is to get an ND filter. You can usually get these on Amazon for about $8 for a cheaper one. I would suggest buying a pack, however, that comes with an ND4, an ND6, and an ND8. This way you will be okay in all situations, and you can even stack them for very bright situations. You can get these for as little as $15. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe. We make new filmmaking videos every Monday.